In this video, we will be covering command line arguments. We will be using the getup library, which is a C style parser for command line options. So what I've done here is I defined a function called start and end dates. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be passing a start and end date in as a command line option. And you'll also notice that I imported a couple of libraries. Uh, the first one is the system library. And then the second one is the getup library. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to use the system library to get the arg arguments that were passed in from the command line. And so what I need to do, I'll create a new variable called argv. And we're going to call system.arg the argv method. And so what, by default, what happens with this is that the file name is the first argument that is passed in. So that's going to be the index of zero. So what we want is from the index of one until the end. So we just pass into our um, array uh, a one and a colon, and then we'll get back a list of arguments. I'm gonna go ahead and just print this out. And so what we need to do here is pass in a couple of arguments. So we'll have a, we'll use S for the start date. And we'll use an end date we'll just, Call that E, and we'll say 2010. And then so we get a list of basically everything that we passed in via the command line. So what we need to do at this point is use the getup library to parse these command line arguments. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and comment this out. So we're going to need a couple of new variables. And we're going to call the getup method from the getup library. And the first argument that we need to pass in is um, our arguments uh, list. And we're going to be passing in S and E for start date and end date. And if we put a colon be beside each one, what that's going to do is it's going to require us to pass in a value. And we'll just go ahead and print these. If we go ahead and rerun this, what we're going to get is a list of tuples. So the first one is our start date, and then the second tuple in our list is going to be our end date. So the next thing we can do is loop through the ops array, and then um, so for each one of our options, we'll just for opt and argument. So the first item is going to be the option, which is the S for start date, and the second item is going to be our actual value. So, yes, and so what we're going to do, we're going to have a conditional statement. And we're going to use the in method. Um, so we're going to add the long form here in a minute. But for now, we just have the short form, so we'll just have one item in the list. And we'll set the start date to the arg. Uh, which is going to be the it's going to be a string value for the purposes of this tutorial and we'll just make an elif so after we get past our, our for loop um, we can just go ahead and print out the start and end dates And if we save the file and rerun it, we're going to see that both of our dates got populated. Now there's a couple things worth noting here. Um, so by if we have a required value for a command line argument, um, we're, go we're going to get an error if we do not pass that in. And another thing too is we must use one of the arguments that um, is recognized. So it, it either has to be an S or an E. Otherwise, we're going to get another error that says that obviously A is not one of the arguments that we have in our list. The normal course of action is to wrap this in a try accept statement. And we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to be using get opt error as error. And for now, uh, for the purposes of this example, we'll just go ahead and print that. And then if we go ahead and run this again, and so we, we have a different error now. So we set the ops. Um, that should be a iterable list. 
And since it's not, we'll just go ahead and set it to none. Actually, we will set this to an empty list. Because if we set it to none, that'll just give us a different error, which we don't want. Okay, so if we hit the error, um, our start and end dates are both going to remain none. Um, based on how we have our logic set up in our try accept block. So by using these single letters, S and E, though that is commonly called the short form, we can also use a long form, which will pass in like a full start date. And so uh, by default, there is a third argument that's basically just an empty list. Uh, so what we can do here is we can um, define these values. So we'll call the first one start date. And the second one end date. If we save the file um, and then rerun it, we can pass that in. So what we need is a double hyphen and start. So start date, um, we'll just leave the same date and we'll call this dash dash end date. Since we add the long form, another thing we have to do is we have to add the long form also to our uh, for loop down here. So the user can either either pass in just the S or they can pass in the full string. So we're going to use dash dash start date and then we'll do the same thing for the end date. Okay, and then if we save and run that. Okay, so now we got um, our dates uh, populated. And then if we go ahead and revert that back to what we had originally. And that'll give us our dates as well. So using getopt is one method of passing in command line arguments into a Python script. Arg parse is another library in which we will be covering in the next video. And this sums up using getopt for command line arguments. Thank you for watching.